Hi folks, it's Sean McCormack and this is Lightroom Blog. And for something different, we're going to look at another program, another raw processor. This time it's Pictorial 3, which is a beta that I have. It's a raw processor like Lightroom, but it works in a different way. It uses a browser, but it does things very differently as well. So this is me finding out what it does. So it's a literal walkthrough. It's not a scripted tutorial or anything like that. So you find out things as I find them out. Taking a quick look at Pictorial uh, version 3 just coming out and it's a raw processor basically. We've got our browser here, so we've got devices and we've got folders. So I'm in a folder, I've navigated to a folder on this machine. So I'm just going to look at it. Straight away we can see we can open and close stuff, different windows here for different views. There's a film strip at the bottom but the way the film strip works is that it slides up and down rather than across. I'm sure that we can drag this up and see more of it. Yep. And we can see the star ratings and stuff like that underneath them as well. So if we turn them back on, we can see what's going on. We have the devices and stuff over here. Plus probably creates a new folder, does it? Or selects the folder to add. So uh, I'm, I'm just looking at it. So I, I don't know much about it. So I've clicked on the presets before we start here. Hovering over it doesn't seem to give a change, but it does give a small thumbnail of what's going on. They're all very kind of alien skinny. Sorry to reference another kind of processor, but the way they looks are, it's kind of filmic. I would use them for portraits or stuff like that. I don't know that I'd use them for landscapes, but I'm just happen to be using a landscape image here. So we have four panels and so you've got your adjustments your info which is kind of your metadata so you can enter basic metadata such as copyright etc and there's a little bit of capture information as well i'm just checking what clicking on them does so it's just general so it opens and closes them we have a history section so obviously i've done nothing to this image so it's just got open on it so i go to adjust and I have looked at this slightly, so normally when you open it for the first time, they're all closed. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out if, I, if there's a way of doing a kind of a solo thing on it. But there's not. So we have a histogram which shows the RGB, and so we can see that there's this gap indicating that it's underexposed. We do have a crop option, so let's say if I click on the crop. And let's say I move around. So the crop is moving on the image. And if we use these, it'll rotate it. So if you need to rotate the image, you can. And that's obviously a manual rotate as well. I'm going to click down the Alt key and see if it gives me anything else. Or the Command key. Nope, so there's no real shortcuts in it. Um, if I double click, what happens? No, I thought double clicking might reset it. No, this one here resets it. Okay, so learning about it as I go. So the light seems to be the basic panel. It's a white balance control. The white balance should be reasonable in this. Pick a gray color. The rock should be gray. Ooh, that's a bit blue. All right, that's a little bit more like what I'm expecting. And click enter to get rid of it, it said, so that we've done. But I'm going to warm it up anyway. It is a sunny day, so I think it should be warmer. Exposure needs to come up. I'm going to bring it up slightly too much so that we get more detail in it, and then I'll pull the highlights back. This would be something I would normally do. It doesn't seem to be doing it. Seems to be doing it after you've let go, but it is quite quick. There's no waiting on it. Clarity up because it's the landscape. There's no dehaze. I use a lot of dehaze. Open up the shadows as well. That's probably too much clarity now looking at that. Pull that back. Uh, that'll do for now. Colour. So we have saturation and vibrance. Again, I kind of put them both up. Now, selective colour is obviously the HSL. You could learn. Whoa, that's way too much. That's what happens when it changes just after you've done it. I'm not really going to go to any of them. Split tone. 
just looks like the split tone panel very very like it i wonder if it has the alt trick for a hue no it doesn't that's the one handy thing in lightroom is if you hold down the alter option key and you go to change it it gives you that color it's not gonna let you do that until you actually put something on it now here on this Okay, it seems okay. Curves. So there's an RGB curve. And then there's individual color curves. Let's see if we can kind of get a matte look easy enough. Yeah, we can, of course. Double explain some of the filmic looks all right. Uh, retouch. So these are obviously local adjustments. All right, so it's a tone local adjustment. All right, so it's telling you what you can do. Click the plus button to define more regions. And so these are the individual things, the same thing. And we can apply opacity to it as well, that's good. So let's uh, pull down, pull down the exposure, we'll do it on the sky and pull back the highlights. I'm just gonna paint the sky with this now. reasonably straightforward that's just a little menu all right so you can have different things in it and you have blending mode as well so we can turn on a blending mode if we wanted so let's put this as soft light Ooh. and then bring back the opacity obviously that's interesting i like that Patch tool, let's get rid of a rock or two. So it's making us select the area we want to take it from. That's kind of obvious that it's there. This might be a little bit less obvious. Yeah, I've done that. I've repositioned it, but it seems a bit mushy to be honest there. Maybe the feather. And healing or cloning, isn't it? Okay, it seems okay. Now I know you're listening to me and I'm just talking, but you have to remember this, I am look, looking at this for the first time, so. Smoothing skin, well, there's no skin here anyway, so I'm not gonna try that. So you can actually change the texture as well. Okay, that looks interesting. Sharpen. All right, so we have a sharpen, so we can sharpen separate areas. Now I have stuff turned on in our histogram here. So we can turn them off. Sorry, it's a single, it's, it's, a, it's a left click, not a right click. Uh, there's a denoise, which is okay, and a defocus, which is obviously uh, a way of, okay, kind of as a radio blur, okay. I'm not going to use that, so I've pressed the delete key and it's gotten rid of it, so that's good. Overlay. So overlay allows us to put textures on it, um, and there's a whole range of them, okay. It's cracked on it for a second. All right, okay, I can see the cracks and darken, lighten, soft light. So it's kind of, they're kind of gray, so soft light and overlay will kind of work with those better. And we have an opacity as well. Frame, so there's a few frames here. Torn, wind. It doesn't respond to that. Okay, a single. All right, okay. Rounded corners. And I wonder why it's showing inverted there. Dirty, okay. 
we can have it as with blend mode as well that's interesting watermark i wouldn't put a watermark on an image directly to have it on you know watermarks are for export and develop so we have neutral and standard so we seem to have some profiles as in camera all oh, right and they are camera profiles so dcp files are the files that are created by the dng profile editor so that means they're the same as the profiles in lightroom at least that's what i think so that is a really just a quick look around what's going on in pictorial it, it seems to have some nice stuff in it that definitely isn't in lightroom there seems to be lots of stuff that isn't in light matter now the sharpening is obviously i was painting it on there but i'm not seeing a sharpen control and i'm not seeing uh, a global denoise now obviously you know for sharpen and denoise you can just paint over the whole image if you want the frame is an interesting addition as is the overlay kind of does give it some effects that are on par then with the uh, alien skin so guys that's pictorial i mean there's obviously a demo if you want to go download it and have a look at it so if you notice the spelling pick p-i-c-k tutorial um very quickly what else am i have i not looked at uh, okay you can have different images open here so that's an image i had loaded earlier just to look at not super quick at changing back And this image does appear to be reasonably unsharp. So, and let's see now. I'm going to use Command minus. Okay, Command right, Grand. And our zoom is here, and this is our. All right, so we can send them to different things as well here. Uh, so that's obviously our export. This way, this says export to a folder. Okay. JPEG or TIFF, preserve GPS information. So there's a basic export. And we have flags. So if I click here for a flag. No, it's just a reject. Okay, so it's three stars or rejected. Okay. Cancel, sorry, cancel that. So it's a reject or it's all right, okay. So it's rejected or a series of stars. I'm just trying to click it in to make, oh, okay, yeah. Maybe, am I still on the white balance for some reason, am I? Okay. I'm not, but I've got a spinning beach ball now. Okay, yeah, so. Oh, that's before and after, okay. And AB is compared to images. So there we go. And view. Hi, the system viewer. Right, so that's the assistant viewer. Okay, so I had to figure out how to get rid of that. So, guys, that's... And well, and girls, obviously. There's plenty of girl photographers. In fact, some of my favourite photographers are girl photographers. And um, this is a landscape. If you want to check out Erin Babnick, I absolutely love her landscapes. So that's a look at pictorial. And obviously, I'm not doing it as uh, a scripted thing because of the fact that it's literally me looking at it. So you're discovering what I'm discovering. So, like I say, it's got some interesting features. And... Yeah, I'll give it a bit more of a try and see how I get on with it. Hi folks, I hope you enjoyed that. As you can see, it's a bit different. I did like the way that you can use overlays. I like the way the fact that the local adjustment brush, uh, or not, well, not the brush, but the retouch tool, lets you add in all sorts of things, including stuff with blending modes. So you can have curves and HSL, for example, together as an adjustment. I really, really like that. It seems to be fast. Uh, I didn't like the way sometimes it jumped a little bit with the settings when you've made the settings and then suddenly it appears. I've gotten used to the more natural graphic look that you get with Lightroom as you're doing it. The file information is stored in an XMP file so your settings get all those saved. So although it doesn't use a catalog, it is still remembering all your settings. Overall, I thought there was a lot to like about it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Uh, we can have a discussion about it if you like. 
If you liked it, do it the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the little bell if you want to get notifications. I'm going to do more plug-in videos as time goes by, because I obviously I do write a column called Maximum Workflow for Kelby One's Lightroom magazine, which is all about workflows. So it's about plugins, and it's about even hardware and things like that. So I will be covering that stuff on the channel as well, not just all short tutorial videos. Thanks for watching. Oh, and do share on your social media if you like any of the videos. It doesn't have to be this one. It could be just one of the other videos that you like. Thanks a million.